This is Andy Tube, and yes, this is another tension video. <laughs> I say that because I was debating uh, whether I should even do a tension video for this Singer 1591. I've done a lot of tension videos, so I, I thought, well, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I went back and searched and through my 568 videos I posted and it came back with 35 videos to do with tension. But while I looked at the titles of some of them I realized it, when, when people come looking for help with their tension many times I think that they search by model numbers like uh, fixed tension on Singer 1591 something like that so here we go another tension video <laughs> okay and I don't mind it really at all because this particular type of tension unit is uh, really a favorite of mine and I'll explain why as we go but in the video, I'm going to be re removing all these uh, parts here to clean them, dry them, put it back on, and reset the tension, uh, meaning like to zero out the tension is what it's called. I will not be removing or adjusting the tension spring, and I won't be taking the tension stud and base off of the face plate. I'm going to be doing that in another video. Um, once I've got the machine all clean and put back together the way I want because I need a needle bar to do that and I, I don't have it back in the machine yet okay so um, to take the tension unit apart uh, you just push back on this numerated dial the one with the numbers and hold it back a little bit so that you can turn the thumb nut to the left and remove it okay and the reason it comes off after you push the dial back is because this particular model has a little pin that sticks out the back of the thumb nut and that's one of the things I like about it there's no little tiny set screw <laughs> to, to fiddle with okay so um, I'm going to just put this in some soapy water here and let it start soaking while I take the rest of these parts off and the next part to come off is the numerated dial just simply called that because it's got the numbers on it if I hold it over here against the blue background you can see all the little holes in it that's made to accept that little pin on the back of the thumb nut. And that's uh, also why I like this because you can make these very small increments when you're setting or resetting your tension. More on that later too. So I'll put that into soak and then the next thing to come off is the stop washer and this uh, particular one if you see that stop washer has a little bent finger on it and that finger always faces you it faces the end of the machine okay some of these have a finger straight up so it doesn't matter some don't even have a little finger they just have this a stop washer with the bar in the center now that we have that off we can take off the actual tension spring which is also called the beehive spring and between this and that thumb nut that's what puts the actual tension on the tension disc to squeeze the needle thread as it's going through and next is going to come off the indicator 
or indicator dial. You see this is the cupped dial with the plus and minus symbols on the top and a bar separator. Okay. Now we get to the actual tension disc and this this particular model has two tension discs on machines that can do twin needle or double needle sewing there's three tension discs but this older machine is not capable of that and so there's only going to be two tension discs and these are uh, concave and convex they're not flat like on the um, say like on the slant needle machines in the later machines they were just flat discs these are curved dished and we'll put those in there to get them soaking for cleaning now the last uh, second to last part I'm going to take off here is the thread guard plate Okay, so uh, this, this plate helps keep the thread lined up between the discs and guards it from uh, flopping around elsewhere. <laughs> and it also has this little guide that you can pull the thread against and into the unit that will place your thread right between those two discs. Okay, so what's left in here is the stud, which is held in by a set screw and, and kind of an adjustable base here that's very similar to the Singer model um, 99K that I did. That's in my cute playlist. Here's the spring. It's a little different than some. And in that stud, though, just like all the rest, there is a tension pin or a tension releasing pin that we want to get out of there to clean that, too. So in this case, because the machine is heavy and I'm not removing the stud, I'm just going to loosen this, oops, sorry, loosen this screw that's holding the faceplate and take off the faceplate. Um because that's what the tension unit on this machine connects into. Yeah, it screws right, it, it connects right in. The parts are attached to this base. Okay. And now to get out the uh, to get out the tension releasing pin inside, I'm just going to tilt the mm, cover plate over my hand and hope that the pin slides out. It usually will. Now when I tilt that stud over my hand I should get the tension pin to come out. And there it is. Okay. It has a bull nosed end that sticks out the back here to be activated by the lever and the front end has a flattened uh, flange on it to push on the back of the uh, indicator plate and stop spring and stuff like that. So I'll put that to soak. Now if you tilt it over and it doesn't come out, sometimes it can be kind of sticky in the stud if oil or lint and stuff is in there. So if it doesn't come out, you can just take an old used needle and push it a little bit here. And it should then it should come right out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this plate back on while I'm all set up here for that. And then uh, I think I'll just let those parts soak in there a little bit. Uh, it's, I'm just using dish soap, my 10 plus year old bottle of Joy. Boy, it's getting a little 
Lo, I don't know if they even make that anymore. Lemon scent. <laughs> and then here you see, I just gave it a good squirt in there and filled it with some warm water. So I'm just letting the parts kind of soak in there for a while. Okay. Got these guys been soaking actually closer to 10 minutes because I answered a couple of comments on my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to drain this now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take to the sink and uh, rinse those off. If I happen to see any little grungy spot, like sometimes this knurled edge of the uh, thumb screw can have gunk in there. I might brush it a little bit first before I rinse it. But usually just soaking them and rinsing them is usually enough. But you'll you'll know when, when you do it, if you do it. So I'm going to rinse those off, dry them with the hair dryer, and then we'll come back and we'll put them on the machine and we'll zero out All the right. tension. I have my shiny, clean, and dry uh, tension parts now for the reassembly. I want to mention one of the reason that I like to clean these is that um, if the tension discs have any uh, oil residue on them, that messes up your tension. And I've had that problem before and played with it where I thought, man, I have to use too much tension to test this machine. So I, I re-zero it out and make it better. And then after sewing for a while, the thread sucks up some of the oil on the uh, disc. And then I'm like, oh, I have way too much tension. <laughs> I have to turn it down to like two or one. So I like having a very clean uh, disc, especially. Okay. So, uh, one thing that we start with is the little tension release pin, and you stick the rounded edge in first, and you can stick it in that slot, and then, uh, let me find a little something here to push that back in with to make sure I have it in the hole. There we go. See, I've got that all the way back. And then... I can even test it by holding this little screwdriver against it while I lift the lever and make sure I feel that pin pushing the screwdriver back, which I do. So now I want to put in the thread guard and uh, on the back edge of the thread guard there is a little piece that sticks out a little square where they've punched out the metal and folded it down and that lines up with a slot on the bottom of the housing and that's how you know that you've got it kind of locked into the right place there so I'll slide that on you see how it's twisty turny but if you move it now I've got it in that slot it's as simple as that, but you want to be sure it's in the slot so it won't be twisting around while you're sewing. Okay. Then I'm going to put the uh, tension discs in now. And you know, I told you that they're kind of dished or cupped. So you want, uh, let's see, convex. These stick out. So you see how there's that little gap between them so you do not want to put them nested together no place to get your thread in there and you don't want to put the concave sides together same same thing no place to get the thread in so convex side together and it doesn't matter they're both the same so just make sure that you've got them like that and you just slide them right on up against the thread guard. Hey, okay. now we're going to put the indicator or indicator dial, the plus minus dial. Okay, and we'll just slide that on. And one thing I didn't mention, 
Maybe you notice when I push that pin back. On most of the machines and tensions that I've worked on, all the other, as a matter of fact, the, the tension unit's been up here on the front of the machine towards you, towards the suist, or sewist, if you will. And when you have your tension post, it's normally best to have it so that the slot is horizontal. It's like level with your bench top or cabinet top or table top. You see how this one is at this angle? And that's f because they want to tilt or you want to tilt this so when you're sitting in front of the machine sewing this is where your number is going to line up, as I'll show you in a minute. And you want to be able to see that. You don't want it straight up where you can't read the number. So, some of you who are familiar with tension and have worked on a tension stud, and you're wondering, why, why is his stud so crooked? <laughs> but that's by design. All right. Next, we're going to put the tension spring. And this manual, the adjuster's manual, and the instruction manual for this model is one of the few that really points out the importance of putting that first loop or the little half loop, also called the teacup loop or the boat loop, on the bottom. There's a lot of tensions where that doesn't matter, but this one they really point it out. So putting that small half teacup loop on the bottom will slide on the tension spring. And here is the reason for that as they also point out. Our stop washer has that little bent finger. And remember I said that it points to you the bend points to you but they whoop <laughs> oops <laughs> they, they're so clean and my hands are dry they're they slipped right out uh, they want this little the purpose is that we want this little back of the finger like where the knuckles would be to sit up above that half loop of the spring. Okay. Great. Ta-da. And a matter of fact, let me, let me, I did a cutout of the manual to show you that picture, a, a little picture of the tension spring and the stop washer. Okay, so maybe that's a better a better view. Next we're going to put the indicator or sorry, the numerated dial, the number dial on. And we want the number 2 to line up with that mark between the minus and the plus. We'll call it the indicator mark. So we get that 2 approximately lined up with that. Okay. Now we're going to hold that on there and we're going to get our thumb screw started on there, thumb nut. And of course we're going to put the side with that little pin towards the back and the knurled edge of the thumb nut towards us. This is a little weird because the studs like aluminum usually and the 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 thumb nut is um, steel and because of that split in the stud sometimes it can be a little tricky to get it perfectly level and started so I usually put it on there hold it against it and try turning it backwards a little bit until I hear like a click. Nope, didn't do it. So 
My point is don't force this on because the steel thumb nut can strip the aluminum threads and you'll be sorry. So just keep uh, gently playing with it and uh, I've done a couple videos about when that stud is all bent up and how you can straighten it out and create the proper spacing. Looking through the camera I have a tendency to to get the nut not lined up properly with that stud. There. See how easy that went on once I hit the right <laughs> the right spot? Okay. Now I'm going to push back again against this numerated dial. Kind of hold it back while I turn the thumb nut down until that pin starts to hit it. Hit that dial. Hit the numerated dial. Then I'll kind of let it go and turn. Oh, did you hear that little click? Let me do it again. I think you probably heard it, but let me let me do it again. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> okay, so you see we're we're we've just set some kind of a tension on there. Okay, so we're going to first test a little bit to see how we're doing. Remember I told you from the front you can you can see this so we can see that the two is lined up but I just want to raise and lower the lever because we should see the release pin moving this indicator dial. There it goes. You see it moving? Okay so we're good so far right? I'm going to turn it to zero and now we have to zero it out. We have to kind of set the tension when it's at zero. <sighs> Most of the Singer tension units I have worked on calls for a tension of about uh, one ounce of pressure or tension. Um, and that's about uh, 20, 25 grams in the neighborhood of 25 grams. And I and I have I have a, a little gauge I bought years ago from the featherweight store that they sell just for that. So it's got a little hanger here or holder, and it has a weight, and it's got a big old giant clip. I think this was originally made as a postage meter <laughs> to weigh your envelope. <laughs> but anyway, anyway uh, you clip this on the thread and you pull it and as it makes tension you see that arrow? This, this starts going up so the arrow is pointing to some hash marks. The newer ones now have a black metal with silver numbers and hash marks. It's a lot easier to read than this. But one side of this is um, grams. There's a G. So 5 gram, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, etc. The other side is ounces. OZ. Okay. So you have like a quarter ounce, half ounce, one ounce. And if I mark one ounce here, maybe I should do it like this. Put my fingertip right at the one ounce mark and we turn it over and you can see that it's just about 30, between 25 and 30. And that's what you want to set this at. That's a good place normally. But the instruction manual doesn't talk about that. Here's what they say to do. Once you've got that, how I, I showed you to install it, then they say thread it up through the tension unit. So we'll bring the we'll bring the thread, we'll lift the lever, okay, to release tension, because you, you have to have your lever up when you thread 
the tension unit or the thread won't go between the discs. Then I mentioned this little silver edge or wing or plate off to the side. And that's so if you hold the thread and push the thread against that under tension, and then if you slide it, it goes the thread goes right between those two discs. See how easy that is? Boom. Just like that. And most of the vintage machines have this as part of the thread guard. Okay. On a lot of the machines where it's here, that little thread guide slide is, is to the right of the unit. Here it's to the left. And then we'll continue to, I'll just hold the, let's see, I'll hold the, uh, I'll hold the thread up there to keep tension under it now. And I'll pull it up and put it over the little fork hook up here. And then I'll bring it down in front of the spring loop and pull the thread up into the loop. Okay. Now you don't have to continue threading. I know that some commercial machines you thread it all the way through the needle and you test the tension right after the needle. But this is how Singer has always described how to do it. Now we're going to put this down to put tension and squeeze those discs and then we're just going to pull the thread straight up. Oh, it's tight. Now, what they say is when you pull this up, you're supposed to feel barely, hmm, like barely feel some drag on the thread. And I'm, I'm having too much. I'm, I'm feeling it not terribly hard. Like if I turn it now to three or four, yeah, I, I really got tension on it. But at one in the zero out position it's just got oh, it's pretty close actually. I might not have had it all the way to one. As far left I mean zero. Sorry. As far left as this will go is zero. And I'm just feeling drag when, when the spring comes up to the top it's just to me it's just a little bit too much. So here's how you adjust the tension uh, anytime you want. When you're zeroing it out or you're sewing and you say, hey, uh, my needle thread is pulling my bobbin thread just a little bit up above this type of fabric I'm sewing. So you can turn this to uh, adjust tension. You know, like maybe you're at three and a half, you could say, oh, I'll turn it down to three. Oh, that's better. But when you're zeroing it out, you have to do that thing about pushing the numerated dial away and move off the pin and moving the pin to another hole. I have too much, so I'm going to turn the knob left to a hole to the left. If I didn't have enough tension, I felt, man, I don't feel any drag. I would move it to a hole to the right, just like minus and plus, okay? So I'm going to push it in a little bit against the spring. I'm going to turn it just a little bit to try and catch the next hole to the left. Bing! Nice, okay. Now, with it still set to zero, I'm going to go back to my thread and I'm going to grab it here and pull it straight up and see how that is. It's a little bit less drag. I don't feel anything till the spring peaks and then I've got, let me get it on the other side of this, I've got just a little, got a little less drag. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to, I would start sewing and testing like that. Okay, so I'm curious how, and, and I've done this before, 
but I'm curious how close I got to one ounce or 30 grams. So I'm just going to hook that little um, gauge or meter, tension meter, postage <laughs> meter up. And uh, I'm going to set it on the ounce side, I guess. It's going to be hard uh, for you to make sure I got this right now. There's zero with no tension. And see as I pull it up, it's going to move this and put more tension on it, right? Okay. So I want to uh, see how I do with the zero. It's going to be hard for you guys to see the scale, um, but I'm going to do it here. And let's see. I have it on zero with the with the bar down, and I'll just start pulling it up and pulling it up. And turning it a little so I can see the light. Just steadily pull it up. Yeah. And that's that's where it was. It was... Oh, it was... Oh, let me get it down here. Sorry. Let me see where the... There is exactly the one ounce. And it the needle, most of the time, was between the one ounce hash mark and the little tiny hash mark right before it right there see and that hold that there see how that's whoop, slip one and 27 so right around there between 27 and 30 and about one inch and I wouldn't uh, knock yourself out trying to get it exact unless you want to I'm a pretty exacting guy at times and I get that but you know when I think back like my mom and great grandma and my mom's first machines they didn't have any numbers on the tension dial there was just two discs and a spring and a nut to, to, to do it and somehow they made clothing and draperies and upholstery and beautiful quilted uh, you know blankets and quilts and stuff like that somehow they managed that without any numbers on the tension <laughs> just by testing to sew their fabric and setting the needle tension where it looked good how they wanted it and then sewing the good part about this is when you do uh, zero it out it's usually a one-time thing you know, like this. I've cleaned it, uh, I put it all back together, and I've zeroed it out, and, and that could be the last time I ever have to do that. If I start losing tension and nice stitches, I might recheck that and say, oh, man, I'm even at zero, I'm getting some pretty good tug resistance. Maybe I better clean this again. And, and you don't have to always take it apart if you don't want. You can take the thread out and you can set it at zero and raise the foot and you can slip a little piece of t-shirt or something dipped in alcohol in between those two tension discs and just give it a little shoe shine like that. And wipe out any lint. If you get lint build up, of course it makes a space when the discs are trying to come together. So, but normally once you zero it out, you're good. You're you're good to go. There we go, folks. <laughs> Attention video number 36 on Andy Tube for the beautiful, powerful Ike. Singer model 1591. Hope you'll come back and see me again sometime. See another video of Ike or you can go to my main page or playlist page and see any of the 569 videos I have now. <laughs> Take care.